Hey guys, um, tonight we're going to do things a little bit differently. I've got my little assistant here. We've got some uh, different object lessons and experiments to talk about. But before we get started, let's take a second and let's pray together, okay? So let's bow our head and close our eyes, okay? Hey, close your eyes. Okay, Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for reminders that you are in control regardless of what's going on around us, and we thank you that our uh, ministry and that our, our, our call to do what you've asked us to do doesn't depend on us, but it's all dependent on you, Lord, and all you ask of us is to be willing and to be obedient to whatever you ask us to do, and so God, I ask you tonight to be with us, to speak clearly through me, to make your word um, evident, and to make it clear. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to respond appropriately to what you ask us to do. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. So I don't know about you guys, but these past few weeks, especially the last couple, um, as this thing kind of goes longer and longer, I miss y'all. I miss my friends. I miss my kids. Um, I know that you guys are not actually my kids, but I know that I'm, I'm really close to you guys. And so... I, I miss y'all, and it's hard to not be around the people that you love, and it's hard to not be around the people that you care so much about, and it's been really hard for me to be away from you guys and to be away from the people that I care so much about, and so as time has gone on, the enemy has kind of crept in and has kind of whispered different things um, that are not true and that are only meant to um, distract me from what God wants me to do and what God wants me to learn during this time. But just because I know that those things are not true doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to just dismiss it. And so um, what's really neat is that um, the Lord knows exactly what we're facing and he knows exactly how we're feeling and he wants us to not focus on our feelings but to focus on him and on the truth that we can find in his word and in, in the Bible and and to focus on those things that we know to be true and not just the feelings going on all around us I know for me that's been these feelings of uncertainty and unsureness and not really sure what's going to happen and um, knowing that we don't have any control over anything, um, has, has kind of gotten me down. And being away from you guys, like I said, has made me kind of sad and um, has had me uh, not having a real sense of like what direction to go in and having all these plans. And now all those plans are kind of either canceled out or totally up in the air. That's really hard. And so I think it's neat that the Lord this week has had us reading in, in F260. If you've been reading along with us, we've been in the first part of second Corinthians and y'all it's really neat that the Lord led us there. And it's been a great reminder for me, the importance of filling my mind with truth. When we don't fill our mind with truth, with God's truth that's found in his word and found in the Bible, when our minds are not filled with scripture, when our minds are not filled with songs that point us back to who he is and what he said and the promises he's made to us, then it's really easy to drift off and to focus on our feelings more than we're focusing on God. And so in the midst of uncertainty and of, in, a, in the midst of unsureness and in the midst of almost being overwhelmed with everything that's going on, um, we can have hope. We don't have to live by our feelings. We don't have to focus on everything else going on around us. We can have hope. Um, we can have hope that our present circumstances and the things that we're feeling right now are not going to last forever. Um, and we can have hope because nothing that we, we do and nothing that we are called to do should be done on our own. It's not up to us. Um, that's one thing I've struggled with in knowing how to minister through this time is how, what do I say? What should we talk about? What should we learn? God, what do you want me to teach during this time? And God reminded me this week that it's not dependent on me, that he's not asking me to come up with a, my plan on my own way, my own, my own path here, but he's asking me to depend on him. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 4 and 5, it says, 
Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So God's not asking us to handle this on our own. He's not asking us to come up with a game plan. He's not asking us to... Um, to live by our feelings or to to uh just wing it or anything like that he's just asking us to depend on him and to be the people that he wants us to be and to keep looking to him and to keep spending time with him and to keep spending time in his word in the bible and to depend on him for what's coming next because even when we don't have the answers which rarely we have all the answers but even when we don't know what's going to happen next we serve a god who does know he knows exactly what's going to happen and he is with us through all of this so we can have hope that our present circumstances these things that we're facing right now this isn't all there is to it this isn't the end um these feelings that we're feeling right now whether they be feeling whether your feelings are kind of similar to mine just a little uncertain, unsure, maybe a little bit overwhelmed, or even if you are celebrating the fact that you don't have anything else going on and you get to play. Um, whatever feelings you are feeling, those are not feelings that will last forever. But the God we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it says in Hebrews. And so, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Um, since we know that this is not forever, that this is not going to last forever, but that our God lasts forever, we can be bold in sharing him with other people, with other people who feel like there is no hope right now, that are feeling those big feelings and are trying to process and work through those big feelings. We can share our hope with them, the hope that Jesus is coming and the hope that Jesus has already come and he saved us from our sins. That's reason to have hope. And so, and so, because we have that hope, we can, choo we can choose to listen to truth. And we can choose to have hope requires us to listen to truth and to live according to that truth, to live according to the truth of God's word and not according to our feelings or according to what seems to be happening all around us. We have to choose to listen to God's truth and we have to choose to be the people he wants us to be and to think about things in the scheme of eternity and what's coming and not necessarily what's going on right now. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, it says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when we choose to focus on God's truth and we choose to um, live by what we know the Bible says and the promises that God has given us, when we choose to do those things, then the Lord is with us and he gives us freedom. And choosing to live by truth is not always easy. Um, but choosing to live by truth is choosing to let God have control and choosing to trust him. And when we fill our minds with truth in Philippians 4, 7, let me flip there. Philippians 4, 7 says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And Philippians 4, 8 tells us what things to think about and what things to focus on instead of focusing on our feelings or on the things going on around us. It says whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and commendable, if there's any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So the things that point us to Jesus are the things that we should be choosing to think about instead and so first I mean back in 2nd Corinthians in chapter 4 in verses 7 and 8 um, or 7 through 10 rather it says that Jesus kind of hides us away he kind of he well it says that Jesus protects us. He guards our hearts and our minds, kind of like a jar of clay. It says in verse 7, but and this is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So the power that we are choosing to trust and the, the truth that we are choosing to, um, to trust is not anything that we can bring about ourselves it's not anything that is of us at all but it's all about God 
Um, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring in the body of the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. So when we, um, so the hope that we have is like something that we are um, keeping inside of us. Um, the hope that we have is something that we carry inside of us, the hope of Jesus and the hope that he gives us whenever we choose to let him be the boss of our lives and the hope that we have that he's coming back again one day and that the things that we're facing right now won't last forever. That hope we carry around with us. And Jesus says that that, that hope inside of us is kind of like a treasure is in a jar of clay. And back in Bible time, y'all, they would have these jars of clay, made out of clay, that they would hide their treasures in. They would hide their most prized possessions, their valuable things. Um, they would hide them in here. And it, would, it was thought that these jars would protect them. And if you think about like a scroll that had some really important um, message or really important truth on it, if you hide that in a jar of clay and put it away, versus just letting that scroll sit there, it is going to protect it. Um, so they would hide their treasures in these jars so that it would be protected from the world around them. And so um, Jesus counts us as valuable. And so he protects us. That hope that's inside of us, he protects. And so I've got a little experiment to kind of, to show what I mean. So this orange that Ainsley is holding, you can see it doesn't have a peel on it. Um, on our own, y'all, we're kind of like this orange with no peel. Make it face a silly gaze. Um, we're kind of like this orange with no peel. We are not protected by a jar of clay when we try to do things on our own. Um, we're not protected by anything. So we're kind of squishy. Um, if you were to hit this orange, you can, Im I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to demonstrate it. Maybe later. But if you were to hit this orange, you can imagine the kind of mess it would make. Um, it would go school. <laughs> it would be Oh man, now I'm just wanting to smush it. But um, you can imagine the mess it would make. There would probably be juice and pulp everywhere. Um, it, it just would not be a good thing. And so if we put this, you want to put it in there? This is kind of like us in life. <laughs> if we go up against the storm, which is kind of represented by our water here, um, if we choose to look to the circumstances around us and to allow the circumstances around us to um, determine who we're gonna trust or what we're gonna trust in, that you can see, just like Ainsley said, what did it do? Sink. It sank. On our own, y'all, we're gonna sink to the bottom. But when we choose to trust God, don't put it in until I tell you, okay? When we choose to trust God and we choose to keep our hope on the inside and we allow God to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, when we allow his truth that we are filling our hearts and minds with on a regular basis through memorizing scripture, through listening to music that points us back to his truth, through spending time every day in his word, then we're protected. We have our treasure in a jar. It's like in a jar of clay. And when we come up against storms, we're going to float. God is going to protect us so that we can overcome whatever comes our way. And not only that, we realize too that when we're floating, you can still see, you can see it's peeking out, right? And so when, we peek, when we're peeking out like that through these storms, then we're looking ahead to what's coming. And we know what's coming is Jesus. So we can look ahead to what's coming instead of focusing on what's here and now. And we know that when we focus on what's coming and when we focus on God's truth, then he protects us. He guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, just like we read about in Philippians. And in 2 Corinthians 4, um, verses 16 through 18, it says, So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting our away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction, which just means these, these things that seem a little crazy right now, these things that we're facing that seem really hard, um, this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look at as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen 
for the things that are seen are transient, which means that they're going to be, they're temporary. They're going to be moving on. They'll be gone sooner than later. But the things that are unseen are eternal. So when we think about what's coming, what's coming is heaven. What's coming is Jesus. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, in the first part of that chapter, it talks about our lives right now are like a tent. Um, that might be a fancy tent, kind of like the one we have here, this nice princess tent. It might be a tent like you might camp in in your backyard. But a tent, after a long time, no matter how pretty it looks, no matter how strong it may seem, you can beat up a tent, right? Our tent, our lives here are full of burdens. They're full of hardships. Um, our lives <laughs> make us kind of break down from time to time. And so our lives here are not anything in comparison to what's coming. Something far better is coming. And in John chapter 14 and verses one through three, Jesus is talking and he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, which who's, who's Jesus' father? God, right? In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So y'all, in God's house, when we choose to let Jesus be the boss of our lives, he prepares a, a room for us in God's house. That's, that's way better than a tent, right? Um, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And so something far better is coming. And that's where our hope comes from, is not from where, what we're facing right now, but it's from what this book says, what God's word says, from the promises that we have of God through what's coming. Um, our hope is based on what's coming and not what's here and now. Um, so when we know hope, we share hope. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20 says that we are ambassadors for Christ. Um, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So while we're here, y'all, we're representatives of God. We're representatives of Christ. We're his ambassadors, which is a fancy way to say a representative or somebody who, um, who represents somebody else. Um, so when we know hope, we have to share hope. If we're Christ's ambassadors, if we're representing Christ to the world around us, then we have to be willing to share the hope that we have in Christ and the hope that we have in through Christ. Even if we seem a little crazy, um, if you look back a little bit in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 13, it says, if we are beside ourselves, which means if we seem a little bit crazy, it is for God. If we're in our right mind, it's for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for their sake and was raised. So y'all, if we know hope, if we know the gospel, if we know the good news that Jesus has come and he has lived a perfect life and he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be in heaven forever to go to that room that he prepares for us in God's house. If we know that Jesus has, ra has been risen, has raised, has been risen. If, if we know that he has come back to life, if he ran out of that grave, like the song we sing at Easter and a lot of other times says, um, then we have to be willing to share that hope with other people. Otherwise, they might not know. They might not hear. Um, even if we seem a little crazy, whatever excuses we may use for not telling people about Jesus, um, Paul said that sometimes he was even considered crazy. And so that hope should guide us. That hope should motivate us. Um, we should be willing to tell everyone about the hope that we have in Christ and about the place that he has prepared for us and about how he wants to guard our hearts and our minds so that we don't sink when hardships come. And so I want to challenge you guys tonight to choose hope and to choose to focus on what God's word says and on what's coming and not on what's going on right now. And I want to challenge you too to think about who might need to hear about this hope. Who can you share this hope with this week and how can you do that? Um, even if you seem a little crazy, like Paul says. Um, so I want to challenge you guys to share that hope 
this week. And if you don't know that hope, if you're not really sure um, what reason we have, why we have hope or what is coming, then talk to your parent or talk to your um, or grandparent or talk to somebody else about that and learn more about the hope that Jesus offers us. I love you guys and I can't wait to see y'all again soon. Talk to you later.